Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have an infinite sum involving the digamma function, summation n from 1 to infinity, 4 to the n over n squared, 2n choose n, digamma of n minus digamma of n plus 1 half. Recall that the Taylor series expansion of the square of sine inverse x has terms like this. So we will try to write down the sum in terms of the inverse sine function. To do this, we use an integral representation for the digamma function. If we have alpha with a real part that is strictly greater than minus 1, the integral x from 0 to 1 x to the alpha over 1 plus x is equal to the integral x from 0 to 1 x to the alpha. Then we write down 1 over 1 plus x as summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g x to the g. If we do the integration term by term, we get summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g over alpha plus g plus 1. We can split the sum into even and odd terms. If the index is equal to 2g, this part is equal to 1. We get 1 over 2g plus alpha plus 1. If the index is 2g plus 1, that is an odd positive integer, minus 1 to the g is equal to minus 1. We get 1 over alpha plus 2g plus 1 plus 1. This is 2g plus alpha plus 2. We can divide the numerator and denominator by 1 half to get 1 half over g plus alpha plus 1 over 2 minus 1 half over g plus alpha plus 2 over 2. The digamma function epsilon z is equal to minus small gamma plus summation g from 0 to infinity 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus z. So what we do here is that we add and subtract 1 half over g plus 1. We can take 1 half as a common factor. We add and subtract small gamma. We take these two terms together and those two terms together. From here, we get the digamma function epsi of alpha over 2 plus 1. From there, we get minus the digamma function epsi of alpha over 2 plus 1 half. In the summation of interest, we have epsi of n minus epsi of n plus 1 half. If we go back to this integral, if alpha is equal to 2n minus 1, this argument becomes 2n minus 1 over 2 plus 1 half, which is equal to n minus 1 half plus 1 half. This is n. The other argument is n plus 1 half. The difference that we have in the summation of interest is equal to minus 2, the integral x from 0 to 1, x to the 2n minus 1, divided by 1 plus x. We can write in the numerator x to the power 2n. In the denominator, we have x multiplied by 1 plus x. The sum of interest now is represented as such. Let's do the summation first. We have sum n from 1 to infinity, 2x to the power 2n over n squared times the binomial coefficient 2n choose n. This summation here is 2 times the square of arc sine x. Our sum is minus 4 integral x from 0 to 1 arc sine x squared divided by x times 1 plus x. Let's do the change of variables x equal to sine y. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is y over 2. Sine inverse x is y. In the denominator, we have sine y times 1 plus sine y. dx is cosine y dy. What is the antiderivative of cosine theta over sine theta times 1 plus sine theta? Do the substitution, alpha equal to sine theta, which means that d alpha is equal to cosine theta sine theta. This is d alpha. Downstairs, we have alpha times 1 plus alpha. This can be written as 1 over alpha minus 1 over alpha plus 1. We get ln alpha from here, ln alpha plus 1 from there. Rewriting alpha in terms of theta, the antiderivative is some integration constant plus the natural logarithm of sine theta divided by 1 plus sine theta. We can go back here and do integration by parts. This integral is minus 4. We have y squared d ln sine y over 1 plus sine y. We have the product of the two functions. When y is pi over 2, we have sine pi over 2, which is 1. We have 2 in the denominator. This is ln 1 half times pi squared over 4 times minus 4. We can write ln 1 half as minus ln 2. This part here is equal to pi squared ln 2. What about this part? Limit as y tends to 0 from above of y squared ln 1 plus sine y. This is 0. We need to focus on the product of y squared times ln sine y. As y approaches 0 from above, ln sine y approaches minus infinity. We can write down y squared as y to the minus 2 in the denominator. This is an infinity over infinity situation. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. The limit is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. The derivative of y to the minus 2 is minus 2y to the minus 3. The derivative of ln sine y is 1 over sine y cosine y. We can isolate minus 1 half as y tends to 0 cosine y tends to 1. We can write down 1 over y to the minus 3 as y times y squared. As y tends to 0, y over sine y tends to 1. Finally, y squared tends to 0 as y tends to 0. The overall limit is equal to 0. We have this pi squared ln 2. Then we have 4 integral from 0 to pi over 2 ln sine y over 1 plus sine y dy squared. This is 2y. We can change this 4 to 8. We have y here, dy. We can split this into 8 integral y from 0 to pi over 2 y ln sine y. 
minus 8, integral y from 0 to y over 2, y ln 1 plus sine y. To evaluate the integrals, we obtain a series representation for ln sine y and ln cosine y. Suppose that we start with the sum v from 0 to n, e to the i 2 v alpha. This is a finite geometric series. Applying the formula, we get that the sum is equal to 1 minus e to the i 2 alpha times n plus 1. In the denominator, we have 1 minus e to the i 2 alpha. Take e to the i alpha as a common factor in the numerator and e to the i alpha as a common factor in the denominator. Downstairs, after taking the common factor, we have e to the minus i alpha minus e to the i alpha. This is minus 2i sine alpha. These two exponentials go away. 1 over minus 2i is i over 2. We have sine alpha downstairs and the difference between these two exponentials in the numerator. Taking this i into account, we have i. This exponential is cosine alpha minus i sine alpha. Then we have minus i. This exponential is cosine 2n plus 1 alpha plus i sine 2n plus 1 alpha. Take the imaginary part of both sides. On the left, we get summation v from 0 to n sine 2v alpha. On the right, we have 2 sine alpha in the denominator. From the numerator, we have cosine alpha minus cosine 2n plus 1 times alpha. Cosine alpha over 2 sine alpha, that's 1 half the cotangent of alpha. Then we have this ratio here. We take alpha to be in the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. We integrate both sides from y to pi over 2. We have integral alpha from y to pi over 2 sine 2v alpha. This is minus cosine 2v alpha divided by 2v. We have the limits of integration y and pi over 2. When we use y, we get cosine 2vy over 2v minus cosine v by over 2v. Cosine v by is equal to minus 1 to the power v. The antiderivative of the cotangent of alpha is ln sine alpha. If alpha is by over 2, sine by over 2 is 1 and ln 1 is 0. So from here we get minus 1 half ln y. Then we have this integral. Multiply both sides by 2. And then we take the limit as n tends to infinity. We have this summation here of cosine 2vy over 2v. It will be v from 1 to infinity. We have the sum minus 1 to the v minus 1 over 2v, v from 1 to infinity. This is the natural logarithm of 2. This part becomes minus ln sine y after multiplying by 2. And we need to take the limit of this integral as n tends to infinity. Move minus ln sine y to the left hand side, ln 2 to the right hand side, together with this infinite sum. Regarding the integral, we can write it as integral alpha from y to pi over 2, 1 over sine alpha, d sine 2n plus 1 alpha over 2n plus 1. We get this product here, evaluated at pi over 2 and y. Then we have this integral. In magnitude, this sine is less than or equal to 1. This cosine is less than or equal to 1. We have the cosecant squared of alpha. This is a decreasing function, so we can upper bound by the cosecant squared of y. The most important thing is that we get finite or bounded quantities divided by 2n plus 1. When we take the limit as n tends to infinity, this part here tends to 0. We have now a series representation for the natural logarithm of sine y. Len sine y is minus len 2 minus summation v from 1 to infinity cosine 2 vy over v. To get a representation for len cosine y, we can replace y on both sides by pi over 2 minus y. We get that len cosine y is minus len 2 minus summation v from 1 to infinity cosine 2v between brackets by over 2 minus y. This numerator is cosine v pi minus 2vy, which is cosine v pi cosine 2vy, and cosine v pi is minus 1 to the power v. This is the series representation for len cosine y. Now we go back to our problem. This is the sum of interest. On the previous page, we have obtained that the sum of interest is pi squared len 2. Then we have 8 times this integral, minus 8 times that integral. Let's start with this one, making use of this result here. From here, we have minus len 2. The antiderivative is 1 half y squared. So we get minus pi squared over 8 len 2. Then we do term by term integration. When we do integration by parts, we obtain that this integral is equal to minus 1 to the power v minus 1 over 4v squared. We have this part here plus the summation. If we split into two sums, one of them is 1 over 4, summation v from 1 to infinity, 1 over v cubed. This is 1 fourth of zeta of 3. The other sum is 1 over 4, summation v from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the v minus 1 over v cubed. We have 1 fourth. We have zeta 3. If we are summing the reciprocals of the cubes of the positive integers, here we have an alternating sign. So we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the cubes of the positive even integers. That sum is 1 eighth of zeta of 3. This is 3 fourth of zeta of 3 times 1 fourth. We get 3 over 16 zeta of 3. 
if we add this term, we get 7 over 16 zeta of 3. This integral here without the 8 is minus y squared over 8 ln 2 plus 7 over 16 zeta of 3. The integrand in the other integral is y times ln 1 plus sine y. Let's replace y by pi over 2 minus y. This sign becomes cosine. 1 plus cosine y is double cosine y over 2 squared. Applying the logarithm, we get ln 2 plus 2 ln cosine y over 2. We have this term, i squared over 8 ln 2. And if we again replace y by pi over 2 minus y, we get the integral y from 0 to pi over 2, y ln cosine y over 2 minus y all over 2. We also have this too. This is cosine y over 4 minus y over 2. We have a representation for ln cosine y, so we use it, replacing y by pi over 4 minus y over 2. As we did above, we integrate this part, and then we integrate the series term by term. Now we have to evaluate this integral here, which is done by parts. We get this result. Now when we sum, if v is odd, this cosine v pi over 2 is equal to 0, minus 1 to the power v is equal to minus 1. When v is odd, the product of this term and that term is 1. We have two summation odd v of 1 over v cubed. This is zeta of 3 minus the sum of the reciprocals of the cubes of the positive even integers. That's 1 over 8 zeta of 3. We get 7 over 4 zeta of 3. What if v is even? We have 2 summation v from 1 to infinity, 1 over 2 v cubed cosine v pi minus 1. This is obtained from that by replacing v by 2 v. And this new sum, if v is even, cosine v pi is 1 and the summand is equal to 0. If v is odd, we get minus 1 minus 1, that's minus 2. We have minus 4 summation v, 1, 3, 5, and so on, of 1 over 8 v cubed. Like what we did above, this is minus 1 half times 7 over 8 zeta of 3. We have minus 7 over 16 zeta of 3. 7 over 4 minus 7 over 16 is equal to 21 over 16. We have zeta of 3 multiplied by 21 over 16. Blogging in the values that we have obtained for these two integrals and combining the similar terms, we get that our sum of interest is pi squared ln 2 minus 7 zeta of 3.